The agenda for the presentation will be okay. This, uh, this presentation, I will try to introduce you the, the first concept and the main concept of OpenUSB. We have a micro break. I try to be a bit faster because I'm very late. Sorry about that. And um, I will try to to exp to, to, to to present a, a nice uh, a topic that is uh, exit protection and integration. We will see. How we can do integration uh, without XA because uh, XA is not working well. But the, the next topic. First of all, uh, I would like to thank Amadeus. I, I saw on your email a lot of people from Amadeus. Could you tell me where from Amadeus? Wow. <coughs> okay. Thanks for your welcome. Uh, thanks for Stefan and Julian. We can. Uh, And for 
example, like we use for example an Oracle application. We check the account with the legacy mainframe IBM. Because bankers are a bit suspicious, we need to have a manual validation. We send a message to Swift, we log the transaction, and we send back a confirmation email. Integration means that all together they will, wait, they will work to execute this business process. And you can think that it's something complex, but in, in the reality, it's, you have more partner and more uh, technology involved in the process. So, now let's define how, for example, IBM and Swift can work together. How they work together? They exchange some technology. We can have some technology, Swift technology that goes into eBay, IBM, or IBM technology that goes to IBM, uh, to Swift. And this link you define here, you find this link between all the partners. If you have, the theory says that if you have n partner, you have n times n minus 1 divided by 2. But in the reality, the statistics say if you have n partner, you have around 2n link to manage. Okay. Now, we exchange technology between IBM and Swift. What happened? We are able to send message between the two partners. And now, when you start to send messages, the problem starts. Why? Because you exchange some, you have a knowledge between IBM and Swift. And knowledge means dependency. <coughs> What's the dependency, for example? If Swift has new parameter, you have an impact on IBM. <coughs> if you have a new protocol for Swift, you have an impact. New security policy, you have an impact. And of course, in our more complex system, if you have any impact, any modification on the record, you can have impact on all the partners. And if you have a new partner, for example, like ACP, you have new link, and of course, it's Modification and evolution of the and the impact are not very clear. Why? Because we, we don't know, because we create link, we have impact everywhere. And it's one of the reasons why in integration, modification and evolution are very expensive. So, we have a proposition. We said knowledge equal dependency equal maintenance. If we want less maintenance, maybe we can limit the knowledge between the partners. That means what we can do. Okay. And to do that, we try to find some technology to reduce the coupling between the partners. And what we want, we want to decrease the dependency between the partners. To do that, we will use three different technologies that are the contract of services, intermediation, and process externalization. In, I will explain the three technologies. Let's talk about the contract of service. I'm sure you know, let's say 90% know what is a contract of service, but the 10% remaining are I explain. We have two applications, application A and application B. And we have the knowledge between these applications, between the two applications. What's happened? In application B, we have function, parameter, security, protocol, location, and other features. What we do, we create what we, a, a, an entity, we name a contract, and we put in the contract the description of the function, location, parameter, everything. And what we do, we substitute the application, the knowledge of the application, and the knowledge of the contract. And we say that the contract is implemented by the application A. We solve a bit about the problem, why? Because application A doesn't know application B, and <coughs> we limit the knowledge. But you will tell me, okay, it's good what you say. But you create a new dependency between application and contract. That's true. But the difference between the two cases is the contract evolves less than an application. Let's, let's have some examples. Just a, a remark, a comment. When I'm talking about contract, 
when you have a communication between two partners, you have many facets of the contract. You have a legal contract, functional contract, financial contract. For example, each time I invoke your service, you have to pay me one euro. Legal contract, if I send you my customer list, you have the right to disclose my, uh, my customer list, and so on. We are talking about the technical contract. I say that contract change less than implementation. Some example, if we have a component that implements a contract, for example, version 1.0, we if we have a new purple component that implements the same contract, we have no impact on the application. The same thing if we have, for example, a, a contract implemented by the Java application. If a C-sharp application implements the same contract, we can substitute Java and C-sharp without impact on application. Same thing for the partner. If I, I, a partner 1 implements the contract or partner 2 implements the same contract, I have no difference by using partner 1 and partner 2. If you have a question, please feel free to... Okay, the contract of service, we, we know what is a contract of service. For example, we have the, for the <coughs> headers, we know what uh, uh, Corva had the uh, IDL contract, Java interface, of course, and web service contract that's named WADL or Wizard. The Wizard contract, everyone know what the Wizard is again? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Very easy. Uh, the Wizard is, uh, is the standard. There are two versions, 1.1 1 .1 and version 2. The main use version is version 1.1. 1 .1. It's an XML, an XML document, and it does not create a dependency between partners. Wizard is a good solution for our integration. Just for the Java geek, the difference between the Wizard and the Java interface is as follows. I define an interface client, public client, get client, integer, ID. Here I have something wrong. You know what is it? What is wrong if I have an application A and application B and I want to define a contract between them and then I write public client, get client, integer, ID. What is wrong? Hmm? What is wrong is where is defined client? Client defined the where. This means that client is a it's a share agreement between A and B. It's defined nowhere. And if I have, an, if I have a, a modification of the client in application B, I have an impact in application A. <coughs> the difference with the whistle is that the whistle does not define the internal object inside B or E. But the wizard defines the message exchange between A and B. That is the main difference. It means that if I, for example, I change completely the internal process and an internal object data structure in application A, since I don't impact my message <coughs> definition defined by the wizard, I have no impact on A. That is the main difference between the wizard and Java interface. Intermediation. Very quickly. Everyone knows what is intermediation. I have two entities, which is A and B. A sends a message to B. An intermediate is an entity I put in the middle that receives the message from I, from A, and sends it to B. What happens in I doesn't matter. I is my intermediate. Now, OpenUSB used a bus. And I would like to show you that the bus is a very good intermediate. And we try to see how it works. We will give, I will give you some example. And we see the bus helps you to decorrelate the partner in the business process. Questions? Okay? Very quickly, what is the bus? The bus is like a pipe where you put messages and you are able to plug some component on the bus. The bus is used to send messages from 
one entity, one component, one other one. The, black, uh, the, the white component say, I would like to send this message to the blue component. And the bus is uh, responsible for routing the message to the blue component. Of course, on the bus, you can have different routes. You can have also multiple targets. Oh, excuse me. I missed something. No, it's okay. Good. I want to show you, in some cases, that the bus is an excellent intermediate. Is, uh, it enables flexibility and loose coupling. And to prove that, I will use four theoretical examples. Of course, it's a theoretical example, but it will give you an idea of what we do on OpenESB. The four examples are as follows. I will add a new communication channel. I will modify business process. I will modify data structure. And I, create, I add a new client to an application. Let's go. Okay, you see, I define here a different shape. This shape in our um, jargon is named a connector or a body component. A connector <coughs> receives message from the outside world, transforms it to be compatible with the bus format. Let's go. I send a message from outside, an HTTP message, and I want to send it to service one. The message is received by HTTP, transformed in a canonical format, and the bus transformed, uh, send a root message to service one. Now the question is, why do I need all this infrastructure? I can use just a, a simple uh, HTTP server, really just a jar file. The reason is, is I want to add a new channel. What I do, I can use also an FTTP binding component. The FTTP will get the message from an FTTP <coughs> server and send the message to the bus. The interest here is that I have no any modification on service one. So, of course, I can use synchronous, asynchronous communication without any modification in service one. But I can also send messages to the outside world from service one. So, using the bus, I can use multiple channels without any impact on service one. Let's go. I define a business process with four steps. Of course, if I have four steps, I have four services, plus four components, plus on the bus. I have a message and I send a message to the bus. Now I have two questions. How the message knows that he has to go to service 1, then to service 2, and to service 3, and to service 4? First, I think my customer writes in the message, goes to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Can be a solution. It's a bad solution. Why? Because we disclose our internal business process to our customer. And we don't want that. Second solution. I say, send the message to service 1. And service 1 says to the message, send to service 2, send to service 3, send to service 4. Is it a good solution? No. Why? Because service 1 no service 2, service 2, no service 3, and so on. Another additional question is, if service 1 generates some data for service 3, will I put the data in a message, and what service 2 will do with this additional data? The question is, where I will store the context of my process? We can say that the components are like musicians. If you have one, two musicians, you can play without any additional help. But if we have, let's say, 10, 20 musicians, we need an orchestrator. Okay. And in our uh, product, we define what we name an orchestrator. In English, conductor. And the orchestrator needs uh, a partition, basically a partition, and the circuitor will send the process into the orchestrator, and now we send the message to the orchestrator. 
This means that we can have some headless component plugged on the bus. Okay? Now, I want to add a new step in my business process. I had a new service. I'm sorry I was not able to manage PowerPoint to do that. I take all the process and I put in the orchestra door and then let's go. We got one, two, three, and four. And we see that mixing an intermediate and the externalization of the business process, we can modify our business process without any impact on the other. Send the process to the orchestrator, and for the yellow message, it will go to the 
is it will send the message to data transformer first and then service three. It's possible for the same application to have different way to fulfill the business process. Good. Modification, small and five, okay, very good. We know everything. I have a question for you. Do you remember at the beginning of this chapter I said blue component send a message to the green component of the map? There is a problem here. Do you know the problem? What is the problem? If I say the blue component send a message to the green component, except the color of the message. You see a problem here or not? <clears throat> I repeat my question. The blue component send a message to the green component. I say something wrong. Two 
Moreover, we will find a, a, a product with three levels of contamination. Other moment? I don't know. But it's the reason why I think it's a, one of the most powerful ESB products on the market. So, open ESB combines three technologies, contamination, control service, extension product. It reduces dramatically knowledge between partners. If we reduce dependency between partners, we reduce <coughs> maintenance. It generates less dependency, blah blah blah, promotion. Less knowledge, less dependency, less maintenance, less cost. If it's true or not, let's say it's not far from the truth. Okay. Agility is strong. Okay, good. Question on that part? We hope for this year 
be able to to have a, a, a single version, but he was uh, one point uh, no, but he was five. We support we will support Massive three, eighteen seven one, and we hope to issue a uh, version two point four. Uh, for 2013, what we would like to do, we would like to extract OpenISB from uh, the application server and to propose a standalone application. <coughs> I will I try to explain why. The idea is to have a, a cloud orientation. It means that you will be, you must be able to, uh, you can be able to, to define a virtual machine and create multiple instances and deploy on the cloud very easily without being annoyed by the Glassfish cluster infrastructure or GBoss cluster The community, we have a partner. Kiel is not here. No, I didn't see. Kiel is from Russia. He, he provides me to come and to talk with you, but maybe he's in Nice at the moment. Maybe, maybe Sophia is a bit far away. Uh, we have two <coughs> main partners in Russia, Logical, Net Legend in America, CIO Group. We work all together. We have other, uh, let's say, I don't know, smaller partners, but let's involve partners in the community. Now, how we can set, we can uh, have a what is the position of OpenSD via the competitor. I have to add the S. <coughs> of course, if you have the price and the scope of the project, uh, of course the price of IBM, Oracle, Tico and Software are very expensive. By the of the price, uh, the list price for Oracle, I think it's uh, 200,000 won per processor, like that, it's amazing. But you have global license, it's very expensive. A bit uh, cheaper, you have a rack of Microsoft, good product like Fiorado and Progress, and I put, let's say, the same uh, label, Mu, Service, and Mix, and uh, GBoss uh, ESB. I put OpenSB a little bit cheaper, why? Because OpenSB has been made by Sandra Christian, and you have a very nice uh, graphics tools to access to the product. Is, uh, the interface with Debian is wonderful and it's very efficient and gives you a lot of productivity. It's very easy to use. Use cases. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. okay. Use case. It's a company named IFDS. IFDS is the first financial hosting company in UK. It means that you have, uh, let's say, in your pocket, you have. Uh, 1,000 million, uh, 100 million pounds, and you want to create a new uh, investment fund. You you know how to make the business, but you don't know how to implement the IT infrastructure. They can host it for you. And I guess uh, propose this kind of service. They. Oh, let me do the picture. It's easier. The IFDS were used to have silo infrastructure. They use mainly the same function for different customers. Maybe when they say maybe the function, the red function is slightly different from the, the, the red function for the customer N, or maybe the process is different. They have a lot of maintenance problems and it costs a lot. For example, if you have to modify the yellow function, you have to modify everywhere. What they did, they use OpenUSB services and each customer through the connector access to the send message and the orchestrator invoke the different services to provide the right service to the customer. It's very generic of course, just to give you an example. Other even more famous, you know, I'm sure you know Laurent Bernard. Laurent Bernard is uh, one of the top DIY companies in France. The main problem they have 
that was with their website. The website access to uh, more than 20 legacy, different legacy. And each time you have to modify a legacy, you have you had an impact on the, on the website and they never know which legacy to have. they have to access big problem. We helped them to define this kind of architecture and in the new version, I think the version 3 has been issued or very late this year, they had some uh, connector with a message to the bus and it's up to the orchestrator to define which legacy we have to involve. A Fortel, a Fortel is a slightly different, it's a small company. Uh, you know Amdoc? Amdoc, let's say it's uh, mainly telecommunication software. And you have a low level API to access to Amdoc that allow you or to, to, to call, they manage the, the credit you have on your chip, or on your phone. Like that. What happened? They, they allow the customer to access to the low level API. One day, a customer made a big mistake and shut down the, the Android system. What they did? They create some high level services, for example, add a new number, put, a, put credit on the card, and they expose to the customer these services. Of course, the same principle. Uh, we send a message to the, to the connector, the constructor call the different services to reply to the customer. Okay. And now it's a, for me it's a, 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 it's a nice uh, moment because I like to make a prototype with the company I'm here. I try to make a prototype for our value. Ha! Uh, I try to imagine, I had a look on your website and I see that uh, you have some uh, internet access, intranet, service integrator. And if you try to implement this kind of architecture with um, <coughs> OpenID, what we can do with that? That means we can have some batch consumer. I don't know, I, I'm sure, I, I read that you work only on SOAP web services for the moment, maybe you have GMA, I don't know. You access to the bus and you have to in the same way. Now you ask me the question for uh, the scalability of the bus. You have to know that this at the high level this is a, a VM, GVM. Okay? In your GVM you have uh, the possibility to define oh excuse me, it's not working. <coughs> you have many customer of oh, 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 oh. okay. You have many customer, you can open multiple stages, for example, open this bit with a load balancer, you can support thousand and thousand and million just for the example. If you want to go deeper in the detail, we have time later. And of course uh, regarding the number of messages you have, hundred and thousand million of messages, don't use the legacy system, but maybe something like a distributed cache that allows you to access directly to uh, the data. Okay. Now, just information. The lessons price. Many people, uh, many companies go to. Uh, Companies go to open it with, of course, it is nice to also to make some uh, to save the budget. Um, I give some uh, uh, example here. <coughs> For example, IPA saved uh, many millions of pounds or dollars. Le Roi Malin as well. Okay, not very. Okay. Question on that uh, the part? Very quickly, I will have to finish. Okay, I would like to introduce our company very quickly. The company has been founded in 1999. We have an office in France, Russia, Netherlands, and Canada. Well, okay. Uh, we cover, let's say, development business, development support on the training aspect. We mainly try, we need work on uh, training, consulting, and the work. We made a lot of POC and benchmark. 
start to program as it works. We make some training words. It's not very interesting for the question. Comment. We have another part, and in the second part, we will discuss about production 